Hi, welcome to Exploring Illusion Free Will. My name is George Ortega. I'm here with my co-host Mike. Mike, good to see you again. And we have our special guest, Nick. Nick, um, in from Manhattan. You know, he comes in every uh, three months or so to do a show. Um, all right, this is episode number 162, Why Overcoming Free Will Belief Matters. And the idea behind this show is like some people will say like, you know, like it doesn't matter if the entire world understands that we don't have free will, but because essentially nothing matters. It's going to be the same world. So this, we're going to explore that. We're going to explore whether or not that's true. Okay, um, as we do with each show, we're going to start out by basically defining what people mean when, when they say they have a free will. In this show, we're not going to get into so much why we don't have free will show, um, because we've, we've done over 150 episodes, 160 explaining why we don't. But, um, but and then we're just going to go into the why the show is important, and then we'll get into the theme. All right, Nick, mm -hmm. um, why, what is this notion, what is this belief that we have a free will? What are they talking about? I like to keep it short and sweet. The belief in free will means you could have done otherwise. Okay, Mike, can you give another description of what people mean by they, when they say that we have a free will? That people's uh, conscious will alone is the only cause of the outcome of their actions. Okay, I'm going to give two more definitions. One is that people believe they have a free will, meaning that they, can, they, they decide what they think, say, do, feel, without anything that's not in their control making that decision for them or even taking part in the decision because like if something that's not in our control takes part in the decision that's not really free will they don't get that the other part that's very important it was important to the last show we did is like the belief in free will means that we're fundamentally morally responsible now we'll, we'll get into this distinction because essentially we hold our, ourselves responsible we hold others responsible but only pragmatically you know because we have to like uphold law and order and all but but people who believe in free will say the buck stops with us that you know we are fundamentally morally responsible for what we do all right um now mike why don't we have free will because from the big bang up till the present moment has just been uh the unfolding of time matter energy up till what we have now and from that things couldn't have been any other way okay nick you want to expand on it we can't have free will because we are products of nature and nurture. All right, and another refutee. Wait, there's there's various ways to refute free will. I'm going to go with the, the hedonic um, oh, yeah, imperative. It's a, a good one. We are hardwired biologically to seek pleasure, avoid pain. We're not good at it because we're biologically hardwired to not be good at it or at whatever. Predicting. What can yes. So like so, any action we take. We always in our mind think that it's going to like lead to greater over. Sometimes we'll go through pain. Sometimes we'll run a marathon and stuff. We're always predicting greater ple uh, pleasure, less pain. Okay, if if that's the case, we can't have free will because we're like we're like computers. All right. So now we've got a definition. We've got several refutations. Why does this matter? What, what um, <laughs> not not why does it matter? What's the importance of this? Because we'll get into the why it matters also. The importance. Okay, you want to go first. Um, sure. The importance of it is because um, with the belief of no free will, it eliminates a good deal of um, regret, blame, uh, shame, even guilt to some degree, and especially anger. That's the most important one. Cool. Okay. It matters because you got 80 to 90 percent of the planet walking around with the wrong fundamental nature of reality. That can't be good for me. It can't be good for you. It can't be good for the climate or the world. Yeah, and, and we'll I mean, think get, about it. We'll get into this climate thing also, but like I just we've got a couple like magazine um, covers here. Now this is like how like we did our, our meetup. We started our meetup in Manhattan like um, April 2010, and then we we started this show in November 2010. In then Manhattan, September then 2011. Next show September 2011. In other words, we've been doing this for several years, and as a result. First of all, this is New Scientist, the first ever cover story refuting free will. This came out in 2011, I believe. Um, let me see if I can... April 16th, 2011. Okay, and the title is Free Will, the Illusion We Can't Live Without. We can live without it. You know, they're not completely right, but it's good. It's the first time ever a, 
uh, a popular science magazine has it as cover story, and this is Scientific American Mind. Okay, this is a year later, or May, June 2012, who's in control, how physics and biology dictate your quote-unquote free will. It's another cover story refuting free will. So, like, what Nick was saying, I mean, this is about truth. This is about, like, understanding who we fundamentally are as human beings. You know, it's, it couldn't matter more. All right, so let's get into the details, though. Okay. Um, let's go more, more like with this this issue of truth. I mean, like, our world is completely deluded. Um, first of all, people say to me, if, if if we catch on and the whole world knows there's no free will, their life will be meaningless. But I want to say, based on this topic, that living your life with the truth is the meaning. In other words, the truth is the meaning. If you want to say, oh, life isn't meaningful because I don't have free will, I'm going to say you're wrong because the meaning comes from knowing the truth about your will. That's where the meaning is. All right, Mike? Yeah, and in a large part, it's very much an institutional problem because we live in a, in a society that doesn't value uh, truth as much as it values, you know, uh, entertainment, sensationalism, or just creating uh, good entertaining illusions. And free will is one of those illusions, and it seems to... Um, on the surface, it seems to be something empowering, but on a deeper level, like understanding that everything just simply is the way it is, um, whether or not, you know, you, your ego wants to take credit for it, you know, it, that's actually a much more stable uh, and realistic and truthful belief. And meaningful. Exactly. Yeah. And in terms of meaning, I mean, like, you're right. People say, oh, my life isn't going to have any meaning because I'm not like the author of it. I'm not controlling it. All. But like, think about it. Like, you know, like we're here for like 80, 90 years, 100, whatever. And then we're gone for, I don't know, eons, like, you know, maybe eternity. Right. And it's like you would think like then, you know, that that means if we're only here for a speck of time and we're surrounded by eternity, then our lives wouldn't have any meaning because like they're, you know, they're so insignificant. But, you know, like. In terms of our lives, people understand that the meaning that we have, even though it's such a brief span, whatever. I mean, a lot of people believe in, you know, I tend to believe in an afterlife. It makes me feel better. <laughs> I have no proof for it, whatever. But so in other words, if people can, like, find meaning in life amidst this, this like, brief span of, you know, this brief flicker of life amidst an eternity, yeah. then they can find meaning even though nothing is up to us. Yeah, and I feel like a lot of, uh, one of the main reasons people are, uh, hesitant to adopt a belief of no free will is because they'd feel it wouldn't make them feel better. That it's a pessimistic, fatalistic attitude to have um, when in reality, you know, it doesn't actually have to be that way. And I think the wording, uh, just wanted to put out there that the wording is very important to because the mind doesn't really grasp, um, you know, believing in the negative of something, like believing in no free will. So, um, because we experience a will, um, and it feels personal, so I think calling it uh, causal will, as you proposed, works fantastically, as opposed to believing in no free will. But people go and to I movies that are already that. made, so why not look at your life as a movie, watch it unfold, and enjoy the experience? Yeah, and you'd just be enjoying it, you know, causal will. You don't know, you don't know what's going to happen anyway, with or without free will, so... Yeah, you, you have no it. idea. You That's a perfect no example. We enjoy movies, you know, yeah. it's, it's meaningful to enjoy movies. That's what I'm trying to say, right? Exactly. <laughs> all right. So, all right, so like, let's get to, like, so let's say, like, tomorrow, by some miracle, people get it. You know, the universe allows us to understand that absolutely no one has a free will. Everything is a movie, you know, we're just, like, playing out our roles. How would, um... How would this affect the kind of hostility that, that would we experience now under the, the free will paradigm? And how would it lessen it? Well, yes. I mean, like, you know, why, why would overcome Well, there'll be much more compassion. It'll be kinder and gentler. Uh, anything that happens to somebody else could have just as easily happened to you since it's really about luck and unluck. And it'll make for a much better world. I know you want to probably talk about climate change denial, but you've convinced me that Getting rid of the free will belief will actually help uh, the climate because it'll get people out of denial. Well, that's number five oh, and sorry, six. Okay. Yeah, we're getting to that. Yeah, that's big. Yeah, I think the truth aspect of it is the most important because I, I still think um, people's personalities, people's basic personalities will still be intact whether or not they do believe or don't believe in uh, free will. For example, if someone has a big ego, instead of believing 
oh, I caused all of this to happen, you know, they'll believe, oh, I won the lottery, um, I got the promotion, the universe chose me. More gratitude. You know, winning. More gratitude. Exactly. You're right. Humble, yeah. No, no, what, what Mike is saying, yes. In other words, like, under the free will paradigm, says, I, you know, did this great thing. I did this great thing. So, like, Mike is saying, like, oh, we get rid of the free will. Those pu people are still going to be saying, the universe chose me. Yeah, so they're still <laughs> going to be narcissists. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. All right, so, but I have a feeling... I have a feeling then, like, all right, once we get to that point, because this is good, this is very good we're exploring this. Um, so at that point, let's say, but what would, what would everybody say to that person? Hey, there was nothing that you did was uh, special. It was luck of the draw. And I was flip a dice, right? And the universe chose you. <laughs> so, yeah, there, there'd be a way to kind of like to work with, the, with even that to kind of like... You're lucky the universe compelled you to do that. Right, right, right. But it Just would like the universe it... compelled us to be here. Are we yeah. lucky or unlucky? Who knows? We'll yeah, see. but it would force people to confront sort of to some degree the unfairness of the universe, which um, might be, you know, more painful to some than others. Okay. Um, hostility. Um, let's say um, somebody in your life does something negative toward you, you know, um, betrays you in some way. Under the free will um, paradigm, we're blaming them. We're kind of like, let's, let, um, let's try to think of a concrete example. Um, let's see. Um, somebody, you have plans with someone to do something, and the last minute, you know, they just change them completely, whatever, you know. Um, so under the free will paradigm, how, how would we feel? Uh, angry and resentful. Right, and, and, and what, what would that anger, what would the free will belief um, lead us to, to do with our anger and resentment? It would be more directed towards the other person. Okay, Mike? Yeah, it would definitely cause us uh, to blame them, feel anger and resentment. Okay, yeah, and then, then, then what happens with that? So, like, in other words, like, um, a lot of times the Greeks understood that, like, whatever we, whenever we do whatever we do, at the time we're doing it, we believe we're doing it right. And so this person that just blew us off with something, right? You know, they just, um, we had plans, they, they just cancel them, whatever. Um, in that person's mind, they feel they did something right. You know, because you know, a lot of times that's what happens. You know, well, I had stuff to do. You know, there's always rationalizations and all, right? So here's the thing. So like, we blame them for not showing up. They blame us for, like, let's say, um, not being understanding enough, not, you know, like, being nitpicking and stuff. So, so in other words, like, so it's a back and forth type thing. All right, now, all right, so we've gotten, again, like, to, um, today is the day everyone gets that we, nobody has a free will. Um, describe that same scenario under that paradigm. You simply understand, hmm, this is how the universe unfolded, and then you just move on. Okay. Well, you're both on the Ideally. same side. You're both wondering why the universe compelled both of you to be in that situation. And you can say the universe is compelling me to admonish you and reprimand you so you don't do it the next time. And that's just, I'm now part of your causal chain. I'm very unhappy with it. And uh, you're responsible, but I'm not deeply blaming you on any deep level. I'm just kind of pragmatically blaming you so you won't do it again. Right, you're just identifying the root of the, You were both on the same side. Or let's figure out together why the universe has caused this situation to occur. Yeah, Mike has a good point. In other words, like right now under the free will paradigm, we have this word blame. We blame others. We blame ourselves. You know, we get rid of the free will as a belief. We're not blaming, because blaming has a pejorative thing. Blaming is like, you did it and all like, we're, Mike was saying we identify the person. The, the, we identify the person as a person who, you know, who said it was going to show up and didn't and all. They're still right? responsible. Well, well Pragmatically. Yeah. Exactly, but, but, but the difference is like under the blame paradigm, we have this anger, <laughs> this disappointment, this frustration, these negative feelings <clears throat> that we're going to direct at the person. <clears throat> Whereas like to the extent that we overcome that, then all of a sudden it becomes about like, you know, like we were saying, I mean like without any kind of like, and, and you know, you have to say this may take years, this may take, you know, decades for it to really be integrated into our mindset because things like this don't really happen overnight but once everybody gets this it'll be impossible for them to feel angry at each other yeah. you know like you're saying they'll, they'll be exploring why did the universe make us do this why did the universe you know and they'll be exploring what whether it was you know they'll be exploring the rationale without this distracting you know animosity 
Yeah, and I think, um, you know, advances in psychology and neuroscience are definitely, you know, going to bring us there uh, in addition to just physics in general. And also uh, in psychology, just the idea of uh, such thing as the unconscious or the subconscious is a huge blow to the free will paradigm. Mike, you want to expand on that? Sure, because um, with the free will paradigm, it's your conscious mind that's always in control of everything, sort of taking credit for all your actions, all your desires, when in reality, you know, there are, uh, you know, there's more puppeteers, you know, in the background, um, sort of like your past, your uh, upbringing, all, you know, all these things you're not completely consciously aware of that are actually pulling the strings. Definitely. Are you aware of the Libet experiment, Benjamin Libet? Nick? You of course I'm aware, yeah. Yeah, no, do you want to describe that? Because this is like how neuro neurology demonstrates empirically, you know, like... They, they put sensors on your head and on your muscles and they ask the participant to note on a piece of paper when they made the decision to press a button, right? And Benjamin Libet saw that the decision to actually make the decision neuro neurologically happened like 700 milliseconds before the, the participant actually was aware that they made the decision. Hmm. So they saw like activity in the brain. Yeah, in other words, like another way of saying this, the experimenters knew before the person making the decision when they were going to make the decision. Because oh, they were looking at a graph they were in the exactly. back. Yeah. And yeah, so that shows that it's not... Uh, just that it's not that the conscious mind isn't acting alone, it's actually showing that there's causality behind it, that this actually happens first. Yes, yes. And like, so like with the Libet experiment, I think it was like maybe 200 milliseconds or whatever, it was less than a second. Mm -hmm. But recent replications, um, 2008, about seven to ten seconds before a person makes a decision, it's already recorded, something's happened in the unconscious, mm -hmm. you know, that, mm -hmm. that's like, all right. So basically, we have this proof. All right, let's go to, um, I want to spend some good time with, with climate change and all, but um, guilt very quickly. So like, how do we try uh, apply this like no free will um, perspective to guilt? You know, because like, you know, the free will, we do something wrong, we feel guilt, guilty, we blame ourselves. So like, if we don't um, believe we have free will, how, how does that work? I think uh, some degree of guilt like might be a little bit healthy. Like, we don't want to uh, hurt others, and when we found out that we did, you know, we maybe should feel slightly guilty. But I don't think there should ever be a time where we're just wallowing in the guilt, just thinking about what we could have done or should have done differently. Okay, Nick? I agree with Mike 100%. In the no free will model, there still should be slight guilt, because if you do something wrong, you need to sit at home and think about it and say, you know what, I really didn't do that correctly, I'm going to do it better the next time. So you can't erase all guilt, but the free will belief invites toxic, harmful, painful, I mean, terribly painful guilt, and that we have to get rid of. All right, I'm going to take a slightly anybody. different perspective from you guys. I'm, uh -oh. I'm going to conjecture that, like, we have a conscience. In other words, like, let's say I do something wrong, right? And, like, you know, at the time I was doing it, I thought it was right, because that's how our mind works. But now, in hindsight, I realize it's wrong. My conscience is telling me it's wrong, and I'm going to vow not to do it again. Okay? So, in, in a certain sense, the work is done. In other words, I don't feel the need to punish myself. You know, because, like, I didn't do, you know, it wasn't up to me. I didn't, I didn't do it of my own free will. So, in other words, as long as I have a conscience that's working, that's acknowledging, acknowledging that I did wrong, and that it's vowing to not do that same wrong in the future, I, I, I think and hope that that would be enough to kind of like condition me to without punishment, without feeling the, the pain mm -hmm. of guilt to, to, to change my behavior. But so again, you agree there has to be a little bit of conscience or guilt without, no, no, without free well, will? Well, just how the would ability you know you to, to feel conscience, that there's something wrong, I mean, I guess that could be labeled guilt in some context. Right. In other words, so we, we may be like discussing semantics. In okay. other words, like when I say conscience, I mean like the recognition of right and wrong that doesn't involve feeling, because guilt is like a painful emotion. So it's like recognizing right and wrong without feeling the pain of guilt. Right. All right. Yes, that makes sense. Let's get right to climate change now, because we only have eight minutes. It's a very important um, topic. Um, who wants to explain how free will belief is causing climate change denial? Okay, well, first of all, denial is a psychological state that requires someone 
is unable to own up to the fact that they're doing something wrong because it's just too unbearable and painful to them for them to admit that they've done something wrong. So what George is saying in his new excellent book, Free Will, It's Refutation, Societal Cost, and Climate Change Denial, uh, is Dude, that right? yeah. He is <laughs> claiming a hypothesis that if we get rid of the free will belief, we will cause a vast majority of people to get out of climate change denial and actually do something about it and help the environment. Yeah, and just to, to frame this in context, the Pew Research Organization did a, a poll, a survey earlier this year, and 66% of Americans are in denial that's cl that climate change is happening and that humans are causing it. You know, almost two-thirds. So you obviously can't address any, something psychologically if you're in denial over it because you, you don't ag agree that it exists. Exactly. Mike, how does that sound? How, you know, how does it sound that, that like, without free will belief, we wouldn't be in this in denial, or at least part of it? Yeah, I feel like, for the most part, most climate change denial is more based in ignorance than as opposed to any sort of emotional denial of uh, facts. Right? You have tons of people believing that it's a conspiracy, that it's being exaggerated, uh, or that it's not important. But I do think that when there are, you know, um, if there is a large majority of people where it is simply an emotional issue, then definitely um, the belief in no free will um, is going to be helpful in alleviating that denial. Right, because think of what's happening. I mean, generally, like, for example, when people go to doctors, I think for the most part, you know, I don't, I don't think 66% of Americans like kind of like, you know, doubt what would most pop doctors say about whatever. I mean, we we tend to trust science in general, right? You know, we tend to trust our medicine and all. But like to have two thirds of the public, you know, not accept, you know, the, these conclusive, these these like preponderous, you know, this evidence, this mountainous evidence in favor of climate change, you know. You might say it's about ignorance, right? And, and it may be, but, but here's the thing. Like, so what's causing it? In other words, like, there's so much news out there. So there's so many um, excellent articles by scientists, by the scientific community, that in other words, if people wanted to kind of like read up on it, they would. So in other words, it may be that this belief in free will, that we're doing so har something so horrible to future generations, just freezes people. They can't deal with it. You know, they don't want to deal with it. They don't want to think about it. They deny it. And, and here, the, the importance of this, like, until we overcome this denial, we can't arrive at the consensus to do what we have to do. Especially since you need more than one country to all cooperate. When you start attributing free will to yourself and other countries, you, you tend to blame them. You don't all cooperate and work on the same side, which is we're all in this together and we need to fix our planet instead of blame. Okay, so again, like why overcoming free will belief matters. Let's, let's go over this once again. In, in a bit more detail because, it, you know, this connection between, you know, like feeling guilty and the needing to believe in free will to feel guilty and all, it's, it's a bit complicated. So Yeah, it is. Um, you want to try it again, Nick, or you want to try it, or Mike? Well, I agree with Mike the first time. You need some way of knowing you did something wrong even without free will because it doesn't give you license to do it. Let's make that very clear. Actions have consequences even without free will. So I don't want anybody calling our show when we go live and say, well, I, you're convincing the whole world there's no free will. People are going to run around and do whatever they want. No, that's not what we're saying at all. Everybody's still responsible just without the hate and the, and the really vicious blame that goes along with it. So like you're saying, if you do something wrong, you should have a little guilt so you can fix it the I, next no, time. No, I, but like, or conscience, as I want to just stay with the climate change and all things. Oh. Let me explain it. All right. Basically... 66, you know, to be in denial of something, you have to feel like somebody's accusing you of something, like you're being indicted. You know, somebody's telling you, the scientists are telling the world, you know, with our driving, with our eating, with our lifestyle, with the way we live, we are destroying the ecology, the future of, of life on the planet, of human life. I mean, like civilization, we're threatening civilization. You know, if anybody saw an inconvenient truth, you know, they understand what I mean. So what happens, like, people react to that kind of indictment, that kind of accusation, right? And, I mean, f most people want to believe they're good people. They want to believe that the people around them are good people, right? So, like, this, this accusation threatens who they believe they are. You know, it threatens their self-identity. So now, according to the research, as I, as I cite in my book, when people are faced with threats to their identity that they can't handle, that are too, too massive a threat, 
they'll deny what's, what's being said. They'll, 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 you know, they'll, they'll deny the, in this case, they'll deny, no, no, climate change can't be happening because I couldn't be doing something so horrible, because the people around me couldn't be doing something right. so horrible. But now, go ahead. Unfortunately, you know, in this, with this subject, it has become very much uh, political. And so when you have people uh, who were raised, conditioned within their um, cultural perspective, like specifically, um, you know, you have politicians denying, denying climate change, you have mainstream um, news networks, you know, very skeptical of it, sort of denouncing the scientists, um, you know, it is it can just be seen as a matter of ignorance and people just buying into what they're told on a day-to-day -day basis. Well, Mike, that's a good point. In other words, like in terms of the denial, we may, be, we may not have to like, you know, address the denial in the entire population. If we can d address the denial in our leaders and in, in these, the, the producers of, of these, you know, news networks that, that don't really reflect the, the reality of what's going on. So just one last point about this. So in other words, like to feel this denial, to feel guilty, so guilty that you go into denial, you have to believe you have free will. In other words, if you believed, if you believed that like, that which is the reality, that like, we're not to, we're not to blame for this. We're not to blame for what's happening to our planet because we don't have a free will. The universe compels us, is compelling us to do what we're doing. We're not even, we're not even to blame for this denial. So again, to the extent that like, that um, we feel vindicated, we feel like absolution, then, like, the, the hope, the expectation is that, like, we won't feel threatened, our self-identity won't feel threatened, we won't feel guilty, and then we won't have to resort to, uh, to, to denial, to denying climate change. Right, and we could still identify ourselves as the agents, as the thing that brought climate change uh, about, or at least is accelerating the process, but without as much um, of the emotional baggage that it would contain for the average person. Exactly. All right, so we've got hat lesson, you know. I just want to say there needs to be more pleasure in doing something about it than denying it, because as we've discussed many times in the show, the hedonic imperative is always in play. Humans have no choice but to always, like robots, have no choice, like programmed, to always go towards pleasure or more satisfaction and away from pain. Excellent. All Ten right. seconds. So, so I hope you guys understand why, you know, Understanding that free will is an illusion does matter. It matters not on a personalized, but to the entire world. Okay, thanks for watching.